Hi. What I thought I'd do in this video is just talk you through building up a, a chord progression. Now I've talked about this in, in other videos and something which I've said there and I think bears repeating here is I don't believe you can teach the, um, the creative process, um, nor should you try to. All I'm trying to do here is show you something that I've done, um, some of the ideas I've used, some of the, the compositional techniques. Um, hopefully to inspire you and give you some ideas for things you can go in and put into your own, uh, your own playing and your own writing. I'm not saying there's a right way to do it or there's a wrong way to do it. I'm not saying that the end product this is the best it could possibly be. So all I'm trying to do is give you some ideas and hopefully some inspiration for you to go away and, uh, and be creative uh, in, your own, uh, in your own time. So what I was doing was basically I was noodling around just in the, the key of E natural minor and a chord progression that I really like in a minor key is one where you start off on the, the minor 7th chord on the 1st degree then you go down to the dominant 7th chord on the flat 7th degree then you go down to the major 7th chord on the flat 6th degree and then you go down to the major 7 chord on the 5th degree. It's quite nice. Yeah. Now the thing with that progression is if you want to loop it around going from the minor 7th chord doesn't really drive itself back up to the minor 7 chord on the, the first degree and there's a little trick that we can do and what we can do is we can borrow a chord from the E from the parallel harmonic minor so here I'm playing the key of E natural minor where the 5 chord is a minor 7 chord E harmonic minor the 5th chord is actually a, a B dominant 7th rather than a B minor 7th so instead of getting that chord get this chord. And that sounds a bit less resolved. It wants to go somewhere and a very natural place for it to go is to go up per, root up a perfect fourth back to the E minor except minor seventh chord. It gives you something which cycles quite nicely. Hear that, that chord substitution that I've put in there, going from that minor seventh chord to the dominant seventh chord, back up to the uh, minor seventh chord on the on the E. Now, if you're not too familiar with the the theory, the chord construction, and so on, I'll put one or two links in the information section on YouTube down there, uh, talking a bit about the construction of triads and seventh chords and so on. Um, I'll throw in a link to the uh, something about the, the minor scale as well if you're not familiar with the minor scale. Uh, but hopefully if you don't have a whole lot of theory knowledge it shouldn't hold you back too much um, with this. But what I would encourage you to do is to understand the theory of chord construction so you know what it is that you're playing. Because that opens up the possibilities because you understand what it is you're playing. You know how to tweak around with it and, and make changes and, and get something that still sounds good and still works well. Okay, so that was kind of where I started, that, that chord progression. And I was thinking about just different ways I could finger that, using different, different chord types and so on. And I'll show you what I ended up sort of with as my, my starting point for this progression. So I just started off on basically an open position E minor chord, so I'm fretting the 4th the and 5th strings at the 2nd fret, and everything else is open. get that chord there. Well, what I was looking at, what, what notes have I got with, like, within reach that I might be able to use to just to embellish the chord progression a little bit. And I thought, well I've got an, a, a G here on the 3rd fret on the top E string, which is within the key. And if I go down the semitone, I've got an F sharp at the 2nd fret. So I, guess I can play those, those notes. I thought that sounded quite nice. And taking the progression, I was going 
original starting point was E minor down to D major. Well, I've got a D major chord here. And then I realise if I play that G, F, sharp sort of little motif, I get a D sus4 to D major chord, which is a, another little chord change that I'm, I'm really quite fond of. So that progression now something like this. Following where I came in from that starting point from E minor to D major, go down to C major. Now around here I've got a C major chord. I was looking, can I put that little G sharp, so that little G F sharp motif in? I can, it's a bit of an awkward fingering, but I can reach the G there and I can sort of swing my hand around a little bit and get the F sharp in. So I can get that. So I can play the E minor, D major, C major progression, but on each bar, on each chord, I've got that little, that little motif giving some, giving me some movement, um, some commonality from one, one bar to the other. And then, so we go from the C major down to a, a B minor. In this case, I'm using the B minor seven. It's the bar chord here. And then, as a chord substitute, bring my little finger down to raise the flat third degree, which is being played on the third fret of the second string, raising that by a semitone to a third degree with the D sharp fourth fret on the on the second string, which gives me a, a B dominant seven chord. And because that's quite unresolved, it leads quite nicely back to an E minor chord if I want to loop the progression. Okay, so that was the starting, point, starting of my, my chord progression. E minor, D major, C major, B minor, 7, B dominant 7th. Um, and then I thought, I'll just have that and play that through um, a couple of times and get something like this. That as it stands, I think it's quite nice. But I don't want to just have those four chords with the little motif just repeating themselves over and over. I wanted something else. So like a second section, you know, if you think of a normal song, you'd have verse and chorus or verse, chorus, bridge type of structure to the piece. So rather than just having that simple four chord progression played, you know, a couple of times, four times, whatever, I wanted to have a second section that I could play. And I was thinking, well, what can I do from there? Where's the logical way to go? And I thought, well, where the root notes are going, I'm going from an e, e root note down to a D root note, down to a C root note, down to a B root note in those chords. What happens if I just keep that going? So purely, a, if you like, a, a geometric exercise and, you know, or watch it, watching the movement of the root note through the, through the key, is, well, the next root note would be an A. So in the key of E natural minor, the chord with the A root note is A minor. Okay, so we've got an A minor chord here. Shape that should be fairly familiar to you. And just following the root note down, we'll go from an A minor, the next root note down in the key of E natural minor is G, so we play a G major chord. The next chord, for following the root note down, the root note would be F sharp. And that would give us in the key V natural minor, that would give us F sharp half diminished, the minor seven flat five chord. Slightly strange sound if you're not if you're just used to normally hearing majors and minors. It might sound a bit odd. But it's it is um diatonically correct. It does fit in. It's probably not a chord you'd want to dwell on for any length of time because it's got a diminished fifth in there, it sounds a bit unresolved. But it's a it's a perfectly valid chord. And if you're not familiar with the fingering for that chord, you can think of it as being like an A minor chord. But I'm also fretting the F sharp second fret on the top E string with my little finger. I'm also fretting the F sharp on the bottom E string with my thumb. 
thumb is a very underused uh, digit for playing chords sometimes it's great for putting in bass notes in chords so F sharp with, uh, with the thumb there gives us an F sharp half diminished chord and following the sequence through going from A minor to G major F sharp half diminished uh, the next root note down was E so it would take us to an E minor chord again and the problem with finishing on that E minor chord is it's the first chord of the first sequence so if we wanted to go from that second section to the first section what I don't want to do is just blur the, the, the change by finishing on one chord and then starting on the same chord I want some sort of difference so I was looking for ways that would like, turn that around and I thought what I could do is then quickly just turn around at the, at the end of that um, that last bar of the second section go from E minor just quickly up to an A minor B minor 7th again B minor 7th because there's an A in the A minor A is the flat 7th of the B minor 7th chord up to the B dominant 7th chord which we borrowed from the key of E harmonic minor nice and unresolved leads us back to the E minor chord which is the chord which stopped the first section so let's take a look then at what we've got for that uh, for that second section we've got an A minor chord G major chord that F sharp half diminished chord and an E minor followed by a turn around end up with something, something like this takes us back to that E minor chord Okay, so what I've got now is two sections to that piece. First progression going from E minor, D major, C major, B minor 7, the dominant sound. And then second section, A minor, G major, F sharp half diminished, E minor, with that little turnaround from A minor, B minor 7th, B dominant 7th. And I'm not saying that's a perfect progression, I'm not saying it's the right way or the wrong way, you know, there's other chords we could use, but it doesn't sound to my ears anyway too bad and we end up with something uh, something like this the progression as it stands uh, for me at the minute now as I said there's not a right way to do this there's not a wrong way to do this there's just you know different compositional techniques and different ideas if you remember another video that I did again I'll stick a link down there on the information section in YouTube I was very much about moving chords just move, say one note at a time to make the changes here the changes are more um, more pronounced it's just a different way of doing it uh, but it helps to have a good vocabulary of chords so you know different shapes and where they are on the neck you know the shapes I've, I've used here generally are sort of, sort of things you find on the first page of a, of a chord dictionary you know the fairly common open position chords but if you want to take that idea and experiment it help, might help if you knew different shapes for them you know different extensions and so on that you might want to use now really this video has just been about giving you some ideas that you might want to go away and use in your own uh, your own writing you know the idea of having a sequence of chords like we had there but with a little motif between them you know, something to move gives me some constancy from one, from one bar to another also the idea of in the key of, na of a natural minor key borrowing that dominant seventh chord from the harmonic parallel harmonic minor to give you an unresolved chord on the fifth um, to, to give the piece a bit more bit more movement 
and the idea of when you're picking chords you know sometimes the ideas don't necessarily have to be purely musically and be a little bit mathematical about it you know what I'm doing there with those root notes is moving down just in series through the key so it's just an idea I so say there's no right way to do it there's no wrong way to do it I just encourage you to go away you know don't rip off what I've what I've done here um, to use it as inspiration to come up with your own ideas you know, if you started playing guitar because you wanted to, you know, to emulate your favourite bands, your favourite musicians, and you know, you wanted to hear you playing your favourite songs by your favourite musicians, that's you know, that's great. But I think if you're not writing your own stuff, you're missing a huge experience because it's very rewarding. It's great fun uh, to actually create your own stuff. Just playing the guitar or just playing any instrument is really only half of the experience. Actually being creative. Um, and writing your own material is, you know, is, is, is a really good exercise. And having some knowledge of the music theory, uh, you know, understanding what notes are in a key, what chords can be built from a key, the different types of chord you can get, you know, suspended chords, seventh chords, extended chords, all that sort of thing. To increase your, your options for what you can play, you know, it's great. And having the theory knowledge so that you understand what you're doing and you understand what your options are and how you can, you can vary things. And that's, in, that's important. So I'd, I'd encourage you to study with your brain as well. Uh, compose ultimately with your ear and with your heart. You know what sounds good and what feels good. But you can guide yourself by having some, some theoretical knowledge to, to guide you down certain ways for what chords types or whatever you could use in a, in a, in a piece. Okay, so I hope that's inspired you and you'll go away and, uh, and do some writing of your own if you're not writing already. Um, and hopefully one or two of the things I've done here might give you ideas for things you can include in your own writing. Okay, so have fun with that. Be creative and uh, see you in another video sometime soon. Bye for now.